Hey, good evening, everybody. The Indiana Hoosiers were back inside the friendly confines of Assembly Hall tonight, coming off of perhaps their most disappointing loss of the season, a road setback against Penn State. They had to try to bounce back from that tonight against, oh, only the fourth-ranked team in the country. No biggie, right? Yogi Ferrell was ready for the challenge, and Assembly was on fire. The Hoosiers were early, too. Already up 13. Colin Hartman says, look what I found. And on the other end, check out number 33 running the floor. Troy Williams saves it. Hartman bangs it. Assembly Hall, loud noises. Hawks did not go away, though. 25 to 9 run is going to be capped off here by this Jared Utah two hand slam. Ties the game up at 45. IU catches a break moments later. Utah bats OG Ananobi shot right into the hands of Nick Zeisloff. No dice, but Troy Williams is there to clean it up. IU would eventually retake the lead and pull away as Williams splits the D and delivers the dagger. Final score. Indiana 85, Iowa 78. Indiana has now knocked off six top five teams in their last seven chances. To Mackey Arena now, where Purdue was also hosting a top 10 team, the Spartans of Michigan State, and it was the Rayfeld Davis show from the gun. Knocks down the triple here to give his Boilers an eight point lead early on in this one. Later on in the first half, it's Davis again stepping into a trade ball in transition. Purdue up 16. Mackey is lit, but Michigan State fought back. Midway through the second half, Spartans down just one before A.J. Hammonds spins, scores, and is fouled. Boilers feeling good. Here comes Michigan State again, though. Look how pretty this is in transition for the Spartans. It leads to Deontay Davis's two-hand jam, and we're tied up again. This game needed overtime. Less than 90 seconds to play in OT here when Vince Edwards bullies his way to the rim, gets the hoop and the harm. That one put it away for the Boilers. Purdue meets Michigan State for the first time since February of 2011. Final score, 82-81. to 81. Moving to the NBA, it was a special night at Bankers Life Fieldhouse tonight. That's because Los Angeles Lakers legend Kobe Bryant was in town for his final game in Indianapolis. Bryant, after five NBA rings and 20 years in the league, will retire at the end of the season. There's Bean running through the tunnel to a chorus of cheers from tonight's sold-out crowd at Bankers Life. Second quarter, Pacers up by two. Here's Kobe all by himself, and, well, the Mamba doesn't get up like he used to. It still counts for two points, though. Moments later, Glenn Robinson the third says, I'll show you how it's done, Bean. He's got those young legs. And Big Dog Jr. with the one-hand punch in transition. Pacers led by 17 in this game, but Kobe and the Lakers came all the way back. Less than three minutes to go. Mamba puts the Lakers up by three with this tough fadeaway jumper. But Paul George, who grew up idolizing Bryant, and he showed some Mamba-like instinct late in this game. Drives to his left, scores in his foul with less than a minute to play. That gave Indiana the lead for good, and the Pacers beat the Lakers tonight 89 to 87. Taking a peek at the Eastern Conference standings, remember the top four seeds get home court advantage for the first round of the playoffs. Indiana right now sitting in fifth, a game ahead of Atlanta. A couple games back of Boston, still plenty of time to go this season as the Knicks come to town tomorrow. Moving to football, the Colts enter their final week of voluntary offseason workouts as they prepare for minicamp next Tuesday. There's been a lot of talk about the new faces in the locker room, especially the rookies. The Colts front office made it their mission to address the team's needs in all three phases of the game this offseason. And coaches and players seem pleased with their new teammates so far. Pagano and the veterans say the rookies have picked up the playbook quickly and appear to be adjusting to the pace of practice rather seamlessly. The new kids on the block say they feel confident heading into minicamp next week. Obviously, uh, the offense is always evolving, defense is always evolving, so it's going to be, um, it's always a challenge, but um, certainly I'm not where I was day one, so um, as long as I just keep progressing that way, I'll be good. It's a lot lot easier, it's not easy, but it's a lot easier than it was when I first got here, because I pretty much got, got the defense kind of down, and, and when they we just keep reiterating things, it, it makes it a lot easier, and you just, just piggyback off things you already learned and just make adjustments to things, so it's a lot easier. Yeah, football just a few months away. Finally tonight, congratulations to Lawrence Central's basketball star Kyle Guy. Senior guard was named a McDonald's All-American, and he was presented with his jersey today. Guy is headed to Virginia to play his college ball, and he says that being named a McDonald's All-American is a dream come true.
Last summer, I made it a goal that I wanted to be a McDonald's All-American. And now that it's come true, it's surreal. I put in the work all summer, two days, six days a week with my trainer, Derek Grant. It's phenomenal and all support from my family and from everyone who, you know, hated against me and didn't think and doubted me, didn't think I'd be here. It was because of them. You show those haters, Kyle. That's all for sports. I'm Peter Hood. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Joel Amber, good evening. Outside of an engaged crowd, the number one key on Brady Salih's board for this game, toughness and discipline. He says Purdue's a good team. They're going to go on runs. Ball State has to be mentally strong enough to handle that kind of adversity in this game and respond to it. Another key stat to watch out for in this game, guys, rebounding. Purdue is 6-1 and one this year when they out-rebound their opponents, 0-3 oh when they don't. Ball State has only lost that battle once this year, Joel and Amber. Yeah, guys, and it's a lot of what you talked about out in that last segment. Number one, he wasn't pleased with them losing Dominique Odin as often as they did. They knew coming into this game that she was a good shooter and was disappointed in their game plan awareness with her. The second thing he was disappointed in, obviously, the offensive rebounds for Purdue. He says Ball State needs to do a much better job cleaning up the defensive glass. And finally, obviously, they're struggling offensively right now. Shots are not falling. He says that will be alleviated when they start to play with better pace, better tempo. He wants to see them speed the game up a little bit more and play with better pace offensively in the second half and then maybe they can get some outside shots to fall guys. Well David good evening pleasure to be with you you guys talked about the numbers that Toledo has to try to replace tonight with Jonathan Williams out of the lineup 20 points per game when I talked to Ball State associate head coach Jason Grunkmeyer yesterday he told me he wouldn't be surprised if he looks up in a couple of years to see Jonathan Williams on an NBA roster. That's the kind of talent that Toledo was missing in its lineup tonight. The Ball State side, you saw Francis Kiapwe in the starting lineup. Good news for the Cardinals on that personnel front. Of course, Kiapwe turned his ankle in the Western Michigan game, but was full go at practice yesterday and expect him to be 100% today, guys. Red Panda entertaining here at the half. Toledo has a two-point lead over Ball State. Let's go down and say hey to Peter Hood, who caught up with Ball State's Jason Grunkemeyer in the uh, on the way into the locker room. Peter, uh, amateur unicyclist yourself, of course. No, but I will give one of you $15 if you try it after the game. <laughs> we, can talk to, we can talk about that a little bit later. But uh, needless to say, Coach Drunkemeyer not thrilled with the defense in the first half. He actually felt like because Toledo didn't have their best player, Jonathan Williams, that gave the rest of the guys a little bit of a boost. He said he thought they came out with more energy and he said obviously Steve Taylor has given the Cardinals a ton of problems in this game. He said they do need to do a better job in the second half of using perimeter guys to crowd his space, not give him as much real estate to work with. He says if they can do that, they might do a better job containing Taylor in the second half and they have to be able guys to match Toledo's energy level and the energy level of the Red Panda. Yeah, I was gonna say, it was probably a great report but I'm just looking over your left shoulder. <laughs> Yeah, you guys have touched on it throughout the broadcast. The issues for this team to this point in the season have been on the defensive end, but Coach Drunkemeyer told me going into the locker room he was pleased with the work they did on that end of the floor in the first half. The problem to Coach Drunkemeyer was the shot selection and decision making on the offensive end of the floor. He said that was the worst shot selection that Ball State has had all season. They talked coming into the game about trying to pound Longwood a little bit down low, maybe settling a little bit too much for jump shots on the offensive end, and Coach Drunkemeyer says they'll need to clean that up in the second half if they want to walk away victorious today. Joel Shelby, pleasure to be with you this afternoon. You guys talked about what's hanging in the balance for Ball State today, possibly the first Mid-American Conference regular season championship since 2003. I asked Brady Sally about that championship potentially today at shoot around and he wanted nothing to do with it. He didn't want to talk about it. He said at the end of the year they'll reflect back and look at what they've done, but right now they're focused on trying to win this game. That's been the beauty of this team, Joel, all year long, Brady Sali says, is they've been able to focus on the task at hand. He says that's what end of the year banquets are for, is looking back and reflecting. It's got a beat and the coach. Thanks, Joel. Coach, congrats on the win. Before we get to overtime, your freshman point guard made big plays all day long, but none bigger than those two free throws to send it to OT. How about the guts to be able to step up in that moment with this whole place going crazy? She was outstanding, and you know, that's why she started all year, because she plays with a lot of poise. She's got a lot of intelligence uh, for a freshman. She plays like a veteran. Uh, she's tired as crap after this game, 
this game was tough on both teams. But I think not only Mariella playing well, but my bench came through today. Sophie Reeker's 10-footer she hit was a big deal. My bench came in the first half when we were down getting us back in the game. I couldn't be more proud of that group behind me, and I'm looking forward to this week. What was the difference in overtime for your group? Well, I just think playing better defense on Bennett. Bennett's a phenomenal post player, and I thought we got some stops against her where we were giving those up in regulation. To get those stops were the easy points they were getting, and we had to take those away, and I think Sophie did a great job of playing great defense. Finally, Coach, you were 5-5 five and five, a little more than halfway through the conference season. You've now won seven of your last eight as you go into the MAC tournament. What has clicked for your group over the last eight games? Well, I think, number one, we got healthy. We had about four games where I was missing either Janice Monacana or Jan bravo Harriet, and as you saw, they're key cogs of what we do. Uh, so that's it's difficult playing without some of your better players, but I think we've gotten healthy, and we've started to play a lot smarter. And uh, this team can accomplish a lot if they stick together and, and to bring the enthusiasm and the effort that they did today. Right, Coach, congrats on a big win, and best of luck in the MAC tournament. Thank you. Back to you, Joel. Welcome back to Schumann Stadium, everybody. Score tied, Ball State 10, Northern Illinois 10 in the Battle of the Bronze Stock Trophy here this afternoon. Now, if you look at the preseason Mid-American Conference polls, Ball State was picked to finish fifth in the West Division. But don't tell head coach Mike New that because he's been here before. As a matter of fact, in 1993, when Mike New was the quarterback here at Ball State, his team was also picked to finish fifth. They went on to win the MAC championship that year. New was the offensive player of the year in the conference, and he says he sees a lot of similar qualities in this team that he did in that 1993 MAC championship team, guys. It was a disappointment. Like I said, eight and eight is not good enough. Not good enough. That's what everyone in the Colts organization will tell you when talking about last season. And in response to the disappointing year, the organization made a lot of changes in the offseason. Enter new defensive coordinator, Ted Monachino. I want them to look fast. I want them to look like they play together. I want them to look uh, confident in each other. And I want them to look uh, like they're not afraid to make a huge play for us when we need to. Monachino is trying to make big changes to a defense that ranked 26th in the league last year. It's still early, but his group seems confident they can improve. I think it's a lot of a lot of tools we have in place, and uh, the guys are making big strides, and uh, we're improving by leaps and bounds, so I, I feel real good about what we have. There's no doubt the Colts have had their fair share of defensive inconsistencies in the Chuck Pagano era, but Pagano is optimistic that that will change this season. We believe every year, you know, and there's going to be uh, things that happen. Um, you know, our goals and our vision has not changed. Uh, we want to be a dominant defense, and until we get there, we're going to keep grinding and doing everything uh, within our power uh, to get to that point. Around India has always been about the offense, scoring a lot of points, a lot of points. We want to be that defense that, you know, when we come out, they cheer in also, not just when the offense come out. We don't want to be labeled an offensive team. We want to be labeled, you know, a team. A team with hopes of lifting the Lombardi at the end of the season. Peter Hood, 24-hour News 8. First, it was Jeremiah Davis, then Ryan Weber, then Taylor Persons, all Division I transfers who have helped turn the Ball State basketball program around. Now another, Jontrell Walker, is ready to leave his mark in Muncie. Oh, very exciting. Just, I'm ready to get out there because I believe we can be something very special. Walker sat out this year after transferring from Incarnate Word. He averaged over 12 points per game as a sophomore, and when he decided to transfer, several schools pursued him. But there was one thing that made Ball State stand out. Their development program is very huge. And when I heard that and I seen their development program and I seen the numbers of their previous players, I wanted to be a part of it. As for what sold head coach James Whitford on Walker. He was very humble. He was, he, I thought he was very honest about the fact that he had made some mistakes while he was there. And it was important to me that he acknowledged and addressed them, and I think that's just part of growing up. And, uh, and he wasn't down there pointing fingers or blaming or any of those things. He was kind of matter-of-factly speaking about the situation and acknowledging that he wasn't perfect by any stretch, and he knew he had some areas to grow in. And that's exactly what Walker has tried to do in his year off. Grow off the court and on. Well, it was funny because I was really focusing on my athleticism and my quickness and things like that, but I ended up finding out I, I really learned how to play the pick and roll a lot better. You know, I learned just the little gaps, the bounce passes, and 
a little little things that are very important in playing the game and just talking and you know things like that and once I seen that once I started getting better in that area I started seeing my growth as an all-around player. He's done a good job you know the thing about John Trell is He's, he's working when you're not looking. You know, like when we're gone, he's getting extra lifts in. He's really working with robes on getting his quickness, trying to get a little bit faster. And, um, and he, I know he comes in to get extra shots when he needs to. And, and uh, so he does, he, he's doing a lot of extra work on his own, which is, I think, a real, real important part of getting better. Walker will jump into the rotation next year on a team that has won 20 plus games two years in a row. And you bet he expects that kind of success to continue. I feel like next year we can definitely get up to a big jump and a, a very good record. Hopefully we can start off with 10-2 and two or 11-3, and three, just really shock the world. I believe we can be that special as long as we can continue to work hard and play together as a team. In Muncie, Peter Hood, Newslink, Indiana. As Ball State women's tennis prepares for its next opponent, Michael Jackson's Billie Jean blares from the speakers at the local YMCA. But perhaps DJ Khaled's All I Do Is Win would be more fitting. Because, well, now 16-2 on the season, the Cardinals are currently riding an 11-match win streak. Probably the key to our success is just how competitive we all are and how passionate we all are. Um, I think if anyone comes and watches a match, like you can see on everyone's faces like how badly we all want to win. You can almost see in them that it, it, it hurts them not only to lose if they lose, but it also hurts them because they feel like they're letting their teammates down. And um, that's pretty rare, and um, I think a lot of it just comes from them and wanting to have that kind of culture for themselves and, and expecting that from each other. These Cardinals aren't a one-hit wonder either. For head coach Max Norris, four straight winning seasons to begin his tenure. That hasn't been done since the mid-90s in this program. He credits much of that success to the culture that's been established. You can look around the league and you can even look around the landscape of college tennis and a lot of teams are very similar in terms of talent, um, in terms of what the players are ranking the juniors. And a lot of it is just the players buying into each other um, and buying into the attitude like, we, we, if we compete hard, we can beat anybody if, if we believe we can. A season ago, those banners behind us were blank. Last year's team changed that. This year's team is looking to add to them. At the beginning of the year, we all kind of sat down and made team goals together, and one of them was win a, uh, a match at the NCAA tournament. So I don't know if we'll make it there yet, but if we do, that's another goal of ours is to win that first round and maybe win other rounds as well. First things first, try to win the MAC for a second straight year. That pursuit will continue on Friday. In Muncie, Peter Hood, Newslink, Indiana.